Okay, now let's continue with the second method of numerical integration, the Simpson rule. So under Simpson rule, we have another two methods, Simpson one third rule and also Simpson three over eight rule. So in this video, I will discuss only the Simpson one third rule. Okay, now so this is our function f x, and I want to find the integration of f x from a to b and you know that the integration represents the area under the graph of x from point a to point b okay. the trapezoidal rule the idea is to draw a straight line connecting these two points on this curve and after that you can approximate the integral by finding the area of the trapezoid but for this Simpson one third rule, we can draw a parabola or a second order a polynomial. So to draw a second order polynomial, we must have three data points. In my illustration here, I only have two data points. Okay, so my third point is actually the midpoint between interval A and B. So this is my third point, the midpoint of A and B. So the formula is E plus E over 2. So we can find the corresponding Y value. So this is F of A plus B over 2. Okay, now we have three data points on our S axis. So I can draw a second order polynomial connecting these three data points. So maybe my second order polynomial will look something like this. So this red line here is the, sec the second of the polynomial of 2 of x. Okay, now to approximate the integral of fx, I can find the integral of the second of the polynomial from point A to point B. And as, as you can see from this illustration here, I have two segments in, uh, under my curve. The first segment here and the second segment. And the width of each interval, the length of this interval is B minus A over and maybe I can name the interval in a proper way. So this is x0 and this is x1, x2. So x0 equals to a, x2 equals to b, and x1 is just the midpoint between a and b. Okay, as I said before, we have two segments under the second order polynomial. So to find the integral of the second order polynomial, We need to find the integral of the second order polynomial from x0 until x1 plus the integral of the second order polynomial from x1 to x2 because we have two different segments here but both for both segments the ways are the same, which is b minus b over 2. After a few steps of derivation and some algebraic manipulation, you will get something like this. For now, I will not show you the derivation of this formula. It can be shown, but it is very time consuming. Okay, from this formula here, This x2 minus x0 over 2, this is actually 
the width of each segment. Because for each segment, the width is B minus A over 2. Okay, so for width, we can use the H notation. So this fraction can be simplified as H over 3. And multiply with f of x naught plus for f of x naught plus x two over two, and this x naught plus x two over two is actually the x one. Okay, this one is for f of x one plus f of x. So this is basically the formula for single application of simple one third rule. And the expression inside the bracket, the first term is 1, the coefficient is 1, the second term, the coefficient is 4, and the third term, the coefficient is 1. For, for single application of simple one third rule, we must have three data points in order for us to construct the second order polynomial. So we must have x naught, x one, and x two. And from these three data points, we can construct the second order polynomial. And and also we will have two segments, two parts in our illustration: the first part and the second part. The problem with the single application of Simpson one third rule is that you may encounter a very large error. So to reduce this error, meaning to say to increase the accuracy of your result, we can divide the integration part into n number of strips with equal width. When I say strip, it is equivalent, it is the same meaning as segments and also parts. To improve the accuracy of Simpson's one third rule, we can divide the interval into n number of segments with equal width. The improvement formula of single application Simpson one third rule is called the composite Simpson one third rule. To derive that formula, you can just substitute the individual integral, something like this expression, into this formula of single application Simpson one third rule. And you will end up with something like this. So now let's look at the illustration above. So basically, uh, we want to substitute the integral of fx from a to b. Okay. For composite functions one third rule, we need to divide the segment. Uh, we need to divide the interval into n segments with equal width. So this is the first segment, the second segment, the third segment, and up until the end segment. For each of these segments, the width are the same. So how to find the width or the length of each segment? The length of each segment is given by the formula B minus A over N. And this B is the upper limit of interval, A is the lower limit of the interval, and N is N is the number of segments. And you must note that your N must always be an even number. The, the concept of Simpson's one third rule is that we need to draw a second order polynomial that goes through three data points. So, for the first second order polynomial, we need to draw, we need to connect this three, the, the first three data points. So, this is your first second order polynomial. Okay. 
okay for the uh, for composite Simpson's wanted rule we need to have multiple second order polynomial so for the next function of polynomial we need to consider the next three data points so this is the uh, the second order polynomial number two so as you can see from these two examples here for both functions we need three data points for each of the function we need three data points and for each of the function we have two segments so for the for this uh, f2x number one we need two segment one two and for the next second order function we also need another two segments segment number three and segment number four here so if you continue the process for composite Simpson one third rule your n will be always an even number it is impossible to have odd number for n so that's why uh, this n here must always be an even number okay let's analyze the formula below so this formula uh, will be used to find the integral of fx from a to b by using composite simpson one third rule and this h here to calculate the value of h you can use the formula of b minus a over n and the expression inside the bracket for the first term the coefficient is 1 second term the coefficient is 4 third term the coefficient is 2 and the next term is 4 and the next term is 2 and the second last term is 4 and the last term the coefficient is always 1 you might be wondering why the sequence of the coefficients is not the same as the single application of Simpson one third rule for single application the the coefficient is 1 and then 4 and then 1 okay but for this one it is 1 for 2 why Okay, now let's uh, consider the first second order polynomial. So for the first second order polynomial, you will have coefficient of 1 for 1. Because for the first second order polynomial, we need to consider from uh, data x0, x1 until x2. Okay, for the next second order polynomial, you need to consider for the data of x2, x3 and x4 so the coefficient will be 1 and then 4 and then 1 so as you can see here these are the coefficients for our f of x2 so that's why for composite simpson one third rule the coefficient of f of x2 will become 2 because you will have um, 2 like terms of f of x2 so that's why the coefficient of simpson composite simpson one third rule is one for two not one for one like the previous one for the first term of the formula for the first term of the expression inside this bracket and the last term the coefficient will be always 1. For the second term, the coefficient is 4. And as you can see here, for f of x3, we also have coefficient of 4. And for f of x n minus 1, the coefficient is also 4. So we can conclude here, the coefficient of 4 will be attached to the terms that have been odd subscript so this is odd c also odd and n minus 1 also odd number because n is uh, must be always even so even number minus 1 will become odd number and the next the next term of 